So again, uh, hello everyone to this webinar, the first of an ongoing series of webinars. Um, the, the topic of this uh, week's webinar is, as you can see, substance over sand. I'm going to focus on cow comfort in laying, laying surfaces for cows. Yeah. And um, my name, I think most of you guys will know me, uh, I'm Nina, and I work for AgriComfort as a veterinarian and veterinary consultant. Um, salesperson also, and with me today is Lucas, yes. and he's our sales director, and yeah. also rubber expert, right? Yeah, you may say so. <laughs> yeah, so Lucas has like a vast uh, experience in, in, in the rubber industry or in the rubber agriculture industry. Yes. You, you work for uh, different companies already, and you are also part of uh, developing uh, new rubber products. Right? Yes, I was involved in uh, product designing, mm -hmm. uh, product sales internationally. Yeah. So I, I can say that I sold a lot of products. <laughs> <for their accounts. laughs> so you know you know about the pros and cons of different products. And yes, yeah, I, I, I've seen quite a few of different products uh, in the market already. Yeah, that, that's awesome because my main focus here is um, more the animal health and comfort side, like I can see um, like the needs of the animal, but um, what I'm sometimes lacking is like the technical understanding yes, of the yeah. material. You know, I'm more medicine and exactly, science like exactly. this. So I think this is going to be a good, a good thing. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Right. Um, so now we mentioned quite a few times that we are part of Agri Comfort. You already, you also wear the Agri Comfort shirt. Yes. Maybe you might uh, want to explain to our Listeners here, what agri comfort uh, Okay, so what agri comfort means is uh, we represent the best manufacturers, the best products in the market connected with uh, animal comfort, uh, dairy comfort, and cow comfort. Mm -hmm. uh, so we represent, uh, as I said, different factories, different products. Mm -hmm. Right now, at this uh, webinar, uh, we are focused on rubber. Uh, Mattresses mm -hmm. from Huber Technik from Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, so our uh, main uh, main goal is just to have pro in our range to have products the best quality, dur durable products, mm -hmm. and innovating uh, innovation. Uh, so uh, it's it's the best the, the newest uh, solutions in the market. Yeah, exactly. And Huber Technic is just a factory that fits perfectly in that scheme, right? Exactly. Yeah. So we're very happy to be able to represent it, as I've already said. So um, it's just like a little introduction for you guys of what every comfort means um, to us. So let's talk about today's topic, substance over sand. So what do we mean by that? Um, generally, uh, we're going to compare the two best practices uh, right now for uh, bedding for dairy cows because everybody that's like planning to build a barn already has a barn planning to retrofit it I think has looked into it and I looked into a lot of like scientific research and what you keep finding is that it's a lot of systems are out there but the real main competitors I would say are like very high quality durable foam foam and rubber oh, mattresses yes. and then uh, deep bedding with sand and that's what people are looking at like the, those two main choices I would say um, so that we pick those we're gonna not really look into straw or green bedding or anything right now I felt like that would be a little bit too much for this webinar today so we're gonna look mattresses versus sand yes. and we're gonna focus on what are the benefits for cows so that's kind of my part mm -hmm. what is the cow comfort health kind of viewpoint gonna pr present um, the results from some scientific studies to you and then Luca is going to talk a little bit more about the economics and what are the costs behind exactly. the system. Yeah. Okay. So when we talk about laying surface and already said like there's really sand versus mattresses, generally when we just look at what do we want in a laying surface for, for a cow, not looking at how we do it, just what do we want. And we want um, the surface has to have um, the perfect conditions for the cow. And with that, I mean, it has to be comfortable for the cow in all laying positions. So it doesn't matter if she wants the cow wants to lay, like as pictured uh, in the picture here, like on her knees like this, or if she wants to lay on the side, she has to be comfortable all the time. That's very important. 
And then it should really mimic pasture, like meadow um, ground uh, from a softness point. So it has to be soft, but still it has to be, um, it, 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 it's not allowed to be too soft or too squishy because it has to give like sufficient grip for the cow to raise up and lay down. And it also has to be thermal comfortable for the cow. So that means um, it can't be too cold or too warm. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And this was also published in a scientific study from 2019 from um, this research group that I cited here. Generally, if you have any questions about any studies that I'm going to cite here, I have all the little references here in the slides. Um, if you want to have more background or if you want to have the link directly link to the studies, please just contact me. I'm very happy to send it out. <clears throat> so with, when we focus on those perfect um, laying so surfaces, um, <clears throat> then if we get everything right, in the points that I just listed, then we get the optimal laying time. And that should be between 12 and 13 hours. So cow has, as we all do, a 24 hour time budget in each day. And research showed like, like they looked into the different things that a cow could do, be at milking, eat, stand up, mm -hmm. walk around, be social, drink, lay down and ruminate. And that should be the largest part in a cow's life, uh, in a cow's time budget in a day and should be between 12 to 13 hours and that is optimal. And everything that is not optimal in the laying surface, like that reduces the comfort of the cow of the laying surface, reduces its lying time. And that's, the cow's ruminating at that time, so that time is very important for milk building. Yes. So it's very important for milk yield. It almost translates directly to milk yield. So we want to really get those 12 to 13 hours. And there were some researchers that looked into what actually, what, what has an impact on this lying time. They found that the surface of, of the cubicles that the cows are laying in in a freestyle barn have, has the biggest influence. For example, a study from 2008 found where they compared straw to sand bedding, um, that when the cows had the, only the option of laying down with straw, um, and or versus the option only laying down with sand, the cows actually spend less time laying down when they only have the sand option. And that was very significant because it was almost an hour. Or even more, it was like 70 minutes or something like that. And then another study that compared different uh, lying tanks and influences of it and found something very interesting. It found that, found that sand is good, but that the level of sand in the in the cubicles has a high impact on the lying time. And already one centimeter below the curve has um, a high impact of 28 minutes less lying time each centimeter. So this, this accumulates pretty quickly. Exactly. And that means you really have to take, take, take care of your salt. And that's kind of hard because, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. You have to do it several times a week because that is important because the cows start to dig in the sand and move it around and just because the body weight is going to push the sand away from the cubicle and it's going to lower the sand level in the cubicle. So you really have to evaluate the stalls and access it and like um, level out the sand several times a week. So that's just... Well, I think it's not only the level of the sand but mm -hmm. also the slope in the, the slope, cubicle. Yeah. You want the slope uh, in the right direction, otherwise the cows are very uncomfortable mm -hmm. in the stalls. Usually yeah. they dig with the front legs when they are getting up, they, they move the sand to the back of the cubicle. So with the wrong slope, the cows are not comfortable. So it should be higher in the front and yes. lower in the back. Yeah, so average is like 3% slope. Mm -hmm. Because that's when the cows are comfortable, like exactly. the, the head is a little bit raised. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so we have to make sure that this is also maintained. Exactly. So yeah. there are quite a few points uh, you have to check with the cubicle mm -hmm. while using sand. Yeah. Okay. Good point. <clears throat> so um, generally say it's, it's only the sand is only as good as its maintenance. It's awesome if you if you ensure the slope yes. and the level of sand yeah. and the quality of sand, which is also very important because uh, you should use a certain grade of sand. So the size of the sand exactly. um, 
particles yes. is important and it should be very clean so it should have like a very low organic matter content because if you combine sand and organic matter like manure for example mm -hmm. any other kind or moisture it can be the perfect environment yeah. for bacteria yeah. growth and um you really want to uh, take care of that, that that's not happening so for that you need to add new clean sand on top of the beds the yeah. cows are also pushing out the old sand and you have to clean out the whole cubicle area twice a year yes. to make sure that this organic matter in the manure is not accumulating yeah and also what is important uh, if you have uh, different uh, cows in the herd like different sizes of cows mm -hmm. some cows may go into the cubicle too far yeah so the manure is in the cubicle it's very difficult to maintain you have to remove the manure from the cubicle otherwise yeah. there's moisture and bacteria development yeah so i wanted to ask you our listeners today um if you would plan a barn right now or if one of your customers is would be planning a barn right now what would you use or what would you recommend to use in a bedding so i just have this little uh, poll here and I would like you all to participate just to because I'm interested because we now have listeners from all over the world or at least from all over Europe yes and yeah. I would really be interested in seeing um, how you would see this for right now and I mean yeah, okay this might be a little biased by the people that we have here as listeners yeah. but um, I would I would ask you to answer this as honestly as possible because we really would like to know Exactly, and uh, farmers would like to know as well. Yeah. Uh, if if you would buy, build a barn, what would you do? Uh, honestly, uh, I I would say mattresses. Mattresses, yeah. Uh, we we will explain later in yeah. the presentation because I already know. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, for me, I think it's the same answer because I, when I would think about building a barn in Germany, mm -hmm. because I think just sand. It's just not an option at all with yeah. uh, methane digesters, yes. and that's like what you would want to have if you build a barn in Germany right now, or build it in the last 15 years, let's yeah. say. And um, I think it's the most sustainable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So very interesting. I think this is what you also opted for. One person here um, went for recycled manure. Yeah. Also very valid, I would say. Um, yeah. Also has its pros and cons but yeah. sustainable system yeah um but most of our listeners here would also go for the mattresses so that's very interesting oh now you can now you can see the results too i'm sorry i was just able to see them okay Okay, so Tommy just um, texted us uh, that he uh, that he has a lot of customers uh, asking for water beds. Uh, I think we will just go on with our presentation for yes, now. Yes, and, and at um, the end, so bear with us for a little bit. You told me we're going to talk about the, um, your questions uh, in at the end of the presentation. Okay. Okay. So we 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 talked about how to um, maintain the sand and the quality of the sand and the quality of the surface. So generally, we can say we have two roads. We can go down um, for very high, like for a good high um, high quality yes. laying surface. Yeah. We can do the sand. We just have to be aware that it's very intensive in maintenance and that it's high labor cost and also high recurring cost other than the labor costs. And exactly. you're going to explain more about that later. And well, and like we, we don't thing. argue sand is excellent environment for cows and it's very comfortable, but it has to be maintained correctly. Oh. Sorry guys. Yeah, it's, it's a bit quick. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Back on track. <laughs> or we can do the uh, mattresses, uh, high quality rubber mattresses. Um, it has, it's important that it's high quality. We cannot yes. just do anything. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, if, if we choose the high quality system, then we, we will end up with very low maintenance, that keeping those uh, well, both because it's a one time investment and then we actually have. Exactly. And it's too general to say rubber mats because mm -hmm. uh, some people may consider that this is black, this is black. And, 
it's not the same. Uh, yeah. This is why we are choosing the best solutions in the market. The best Absolutely, yeah. As well. Otherwise, uh, if you install any marks from the market, uh, it may happen that you have to replace the whole thing. So mm -hmm. it's it's not always. Of course, quality comes uh, uh, with price. So it's rubber and Absolutely. rubber is not always the same. Yeah, <laughs> it's. Um... I think it's like the same over quite a few purchases actually. Yes. That they're saying like you have like the option of like high cost and high quality, high cost, low quality, or yes. low cost, low quality. Exactly. You, the, just the, the combination of low cost, high quality, that is not existent. Exactly. Because high quality just costs the producer quite a bit in the material that they're using and so on. Yes. And it's, um, <laughs> no, it's not a charity. So. No, but the, yeah. the thing is, uh, I, I just wanted to say that not all yeah, rubber mats totally. are the same. Yeah, I totally understand. And then I just wanted to, um, as like the last part that is like important to me on a cow health standpoint, I got a lot of questions asked mm -hmm. about uh, recycling sand. Yes. I think it's uh, it's valid because you have to buy less new sand, and depending on where the sand is coming from. If it's like if you have a, a quarry close to your farm or not, um, that can be a major cost point, and it's very it's a it's more sustainable because you put less sand into your fields. Mm -hmm. But you have to um, look into what you are really using the RSO adding. So there was um, an article from Journal Journal of Dairy Science that actually compared the dry matter and um, organic matter content of clean sand and recycled sand, mm -hmm. and this was only one time recycled sand. And not okay. most of the time with recycled sand. And already in this first time recycled sand, the organic matter content was way higher and the dry matter content was like way lower than compared to the clean sand. Mm -hmm. And that's just bad news because it that can enhance the bacterial growth in, in, in the sand. Sand as itself is not organic. A bacteria have has a hard time growing in it, but if it's yes. contaminated with organic matter, that bacteria actually has quite a good chance of growing in it. And another very interesting uh, thing that I found is that mycobacteria, avium uh, subspecies paratuberculosis, the ecological agent for the Jones disease uh, in cattle, that actually benefits from this technique of um, recycling. Recycling okay. manure or, or drying manure and then using it as padding and also recycling um, sand because it can build spores and it mm -hmm. then can regrow in the sand. And uh, yeah, then you, I mean, you have to just think about that you're moving the sand and that you're reusing it a different unit that it came from. So with that, you can just help the spread of those, uh, of this disease on your farm. And that can actually lower your milk quality quite a bit. Yeah. So this is what I wanted to say about uh, cow health and the effects of the different bedding styles on the cow health and comfort side. Let's now talk a little bit about the cost. We already mentioned it a couple of times. Yes. Let's let's look into that. So economics and real costs of sand. Before we really go into this topic, I would like to ask another question to our listeners. And go. <clears throat> I wanted to ask you what are is your opinion? Do you think that, uh, or what do you think is affected by sand as bedding material? What kind of equipment? And you can choose as many as you want in this poll. It's a yes. multiple choice. Yeah. And um, what kind of parts of a farm do you think is affected by sand? Um, so I'm just going to give you guys a little moment to think about it. And I have to admit, when I was first thinking about it, I was like, sure. Sand is in the barn, so everything that the sand touches in the barn obviously is affected by the sand. Exactly. And um, then when I looked more and more into it and like had more discussions with farmers that used it and um, so on, I, I just started to realize the depth of, of the effect. Well, farmers know. So if you, if you <laughs> talk to the farmers, you will, you will immediately find out yeah. what's going on. Yeah, okay. So I just, to be a little time sensitive here, I'm just going to close this poll now um, and going to show you the results. So uh, yes, <laughs> I think uh, we, we can see that, uh, of course, uh, scrapers and manure handling are like the 
I would say the most logical yes. answers because obviously the sand is going to be in the manure and it's going to be the scraper is going to uh, push the sand out exactly. and it sounds very abrasive so it obviously has an effect on it. Yeah. But yes, milking equipment, <laughs> and I see that a lot of people have chosen this too, is also affected by it. I'm going to go it a little is, bit more yes. into that too. And the feeding too. Sand is just going to get anywhere in the farm. Yeah. So explain this to us, the biscuits. Yes, so uh, talking about cost of sand, it's uh, not only making the cubic holes and just filling it with sand. It's cost that it's recurring mm -hmm. like, all the time. Yeah. You have to add sand all the time. Uh, you need uh, labor just to maintain, maintain uh, all the cubicles. So as mm -hmm. we said, uh, there should be enough sand in the yeah. cubicle. Uh, the lower the, the cubicle below the, the curb, the less uh, time the cows are standing lying. Yeah. Also, the slope is very important. Yeah. Uh, so you have to make sure the cubicle is actually always full. Exactly. And then you have to like console the Yes, and, yeah. and, 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 and you, you need that slope uh, the right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, so you also have the, the howling equipment costs so because you need those just to fill yeah. the cubicles. Uh, there is wear and tear on scrapers, uh, I'm, I'm sure everybody knows, so chains, uh, lines, mm -hmm. scrapers. Uh, and they like the chains are even like um, making like little grooves into the concrete because like when the sand is like there's a, yes there's a lot of friction mm -hmm. uh, between the chain and the surface yeah. uh, of, of, of the alley floor yeah uh, there is also uh, more wear on milking equipment the mm -hmm. reason for that the sand gets wet because of some milk some liquids uh, in the cubicle and it stays with the cow. Mm -hmm. So when the cow, when she's going uh, for milking, it goes to the machines as yeah. well. I always like make the comparison of like, it's just a visit at the beach. Like oh, yes. holiday and you like at the end, you will like weeks later, you will still find sand in your clothes that you brought with you. And exactly. It's just going everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so there's way more wear uh, in the milking equipment in all those rubber parts, yeah. especially. Yes. And uh, it has really a uh, big effect on soil. So if you put the manure with sand on the, on the soil. Yeah, I think uh, this is an underestimated point. Exactly, yeah. 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 And uh, also uh, about the costs of the sand and uh, well, uh, it's, it's not all recycling as mm -hmm. well. So if you want to recycle uh, mm -hmm. sand, you need a special uh, equipment, special machinery, yeah. uh, which also has a lot of uh, wear and tear because of the sand. Yeah. So. And I mean, it's like pumps and all of that. That. Yes. And. Are, uh, are, like those are like expensive parts, and yes. then you did, then you keep exchanging them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, all for the comfort of the cow, right? I mean. <laughs> I, I don't blame anybody doing it, but you just have to be aware of this up front. It's like the building is maybe a little cheaper, but um, then the, you have this cost and you maybe were not aware of this before. Yes, you have to make a calculation yes. and just uh, check all the costs. Yeah. Uh, because yeah, I agree. yeah, with the rubber mattresses, it's like one time uh, cost and it's divided by so many years yeah. and it's less maintenance, less, less work. So yeah, maybe um, I can make this a little well, here. Okay, so basing on, on data from the Ministry of Agriculture Ontario, uh, cost of building uh, per cubicle uh, is like 60 to 80 dollars less mm -hmm. uh, for, for cent than, than uh, making the mattresses. It's obvious because you have to put more concrete in the cubicles. Okay. And I'm not even sure if, if they in this instance even talked about concrete at all or not. Exactly. Because we have to be aware that here in Europe we can't really see this, but in North America the general practice would be to not have concrete under the sand at all. Yes. Yeah. 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 So it's uh, probably the difference is even smaller uh, yeah. here in Europe. Uh, so building cost per cubicle for sure yes. it's lower, uh, but I don't think it's 
such a big difference if you if you look at the, at the whole equipment. Exactly, because you don't build the barn for that first day or first year. You, exactly. you build it to use it many, yes. many years. Yes. And um, the, if you use the high quality mattress, then you're just looking at the high time of usage. And, yes. Yeah. Uh, recurring costs, as we said earlier, you have to maintain uh, sand bedding like all the time yeah. and it's never a good time. I think you, were, you will agree if there is a barn with robots, mm -hmm. there is never a good time to make the bedding. Exactly, because what do you want to do? Do you want to like have somebody shush up all the cows so you can graze the sand? Yes. Or do you do it cubicle by cubicle? Or? Exactly, so mm -hmm. it's, that there's, it's, it's never a good time to do it. So in, in case of mattresses, I, I always recommend just once a day just to check uh, if there is some mm -hmm. uh, manure in the cubicles, of course, you have to just scrape it if necessary mm -hmm. and just put a little bit of bedding uh, yeah. on the mattresses. And that's basically, that's it. But I would also argue, I worked in dairy farms and I would say this is like a low, I'm not good, that's, that's not good to say, but this is a job that's easy to learn, like easy to learn how to maintain yes. the yeah. perfect surface on a rubber mat yeah. because 99% is already there. You only need to like take a little bit of manure just, out, maybe. And just check if everything is correct. If everything's all right, correct, yeah. and like put maybe like a little calcium yes. on top of it, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Versus grading sand in a in a cubicle deep bedded sand stall, that can be quite a big. I'm like super bad with driving tractors. I I did not want to be the person that that is like getting that grader in there and right. driving it. And also, it's it's quite easy to to damage the cubicles uh, with the tractor. Exactly, and and even or with the, the equipment. With, with the sand <laughs> yeah. So I'm just saying, I didn't want to do it. Um, I'm not good enough at driving machinery. Yeah. And I, I just think the point is, it's hard to find good labor anyhow, and then you need. It's just another task on a farm that you need somebody highly educated, yes, and capable skills. of like driving the machinery. So not me, maybe you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just another task that needs to be done. By, uh, also, by. yeah. Also, if you look, if we look at wear and tear costs, mm -hmm. so with the sand, as we said, there are so many machines affected with mm -hmm. sand, while with mattresses, it's uh, it's just a normal wear and tear. I would say so. Too. so yeah, and uh, cost of manure handling systems, so you need those uh, with the sand. Uh, well, the pumps and uh, all other equipments are, were, are wearing really, really fast. It's, it's a wearing, but you also need like uh, different augers yes. to like move the sand out of the manure because you have sand in the manure, you will have sand in your manure. Exactly. And then you need to move that out of your slurry somehow. So you need to clean up your slurry, and uh, for that you need different equipment like armor motors, for example, um, and you need extra time and labor to clean up the story. And imagine to do that in the winter time, especially Again. with the big frost. Again, I wouldn't want to do it. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, now we talked a lot about um, the sand, let's just summarize it a little bit. Um, I would say to optimize your cow comfort, it's very important to, that, you that you have guaranteed consistency in your laying surface to, to create high cow comfort. And for that, you should opt for a system where low maintenance is necessary, where you have low recurring costs in like cost and I'm talking of like real money that you have to invest, but also labor that yes. you have to invest. And you should really look at the wear and tear of an equipment um, that your bedding system is. Yeah. Um, uh, causing and you should choose, in my eyes, you should choose a sustainable system that is causing less wear and tear. And I think we said it now often enough, but um, maybe we can just go through it again, that the Hoover mattresses are just what we believe in. Well, I, I can show you uh, an example. Oh yeah, that would be great. So the Hoover mattress, uh, the most popular for dairy, for mm -hmm. GS, or millimeters top cover. So why we believe in Hoover? Uh, they are the only one using a new tire, new tire, new tire compound. Compound, yeah. Uh, so they can go with uh, only four millimeters uh, top cover just to protect the mattress, uh, which is also 50-50 uh, uh, latex, latex and, and polyurethane. Uh, 
Yes. So that's the mattress. That's actually that's uh, the mattress we are using for sleeping as well. <laughs> so Correct, yeah. The more it, it's it's a lot of comfort for the cows. The installation is really easy. Yeah. Uh, and the maintenance is quite easy. Yeah. So, and I mean, it's not only us. It's also the DLG that believes in us. That's exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's DLG proven. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is. Yeah. So they just like what I said in the beginning. Um, we want to have a system that limits the pasture, and the Hoover mattress is just does that. They are soft, they're comfortable, they're joint relaxing, and all that's very healthy for your cows. And now some people will say, well, sure, they do that in the beginning. Sand, I constantly change out, so I I can like handle it myself if it's like not to the standard that I want anymore. Yes. Then I take it yeah. out and put it back in because I'm already prepared for that. In the rubber, I kind of want to make an investment that I want to keep for quite a few years. Yes. What do you say about that? Well, Hooper Technic is a German company, German quality, <laughs> uh, which is known worldwide. I like to do that. <laughs> and uh, 10 years warranty for those mats. I've seen those mats installed in the barns many, many years. Yeah. I, I, I've recently I just visited that farm 12 years with, with Hooper mattresses for 12 yeah. years. Still working fine. Still working fine, yeah. Uh, so I'm sure of that product. It's bulletproof, and it's, uh, it's a pleasure just to sell this product yeah, for farmers. Yeah, exactly. And there's just like all the things that you might have seen with proper mattresses uh, in other farms uh, with different products, like yes. the bulging, like like suddenly getting a weird like bubble kind of style things, or like tears and stuff like that. I I just have never seen it in rubber and. Well, honest, honestly, uh, Hooper is the company that you can just uh, put on Google Maps <laughs> and you actually see the factory and you can see where it's produced. It's in Germany. Uh -huh. While with this different pro other producers, you actually don't know yeah, where, where, yeah. where they are. They might be from. sold from somewhere else, but they definitely don't produce there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's excellent. So it's just reliable and yes. good German reliability. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We live in cows. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, like we, we already mentioned this now, that the DLG or the, the German uh, Agriculture Union, they already proved and sealed it um, with, and they have like a continuous monitoring program. Yes. And Hoover is always getting the highest grade there. So we're just very confident in promoting the product with yes. all of that because it's proven by the highest standard in the technology. Okay, that, that was so our webinar on rubber and versus sand yes. and cow yeah. comfort. I thank you all for participating.